Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's Garabo. It's Cranky. Whatever. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're still out. I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If not, welcome to the party. I am... Um, I don't have a emotional capacity to be spraying my hair today. Uh, I just... I don't. I know I should keep doing it, but like, I'm just not up for it, so... Y'all know I make this carrot spray. It's in the house and it takes a lot for me to go there. Okay, um... Maybe I'll spray it on, like, after chatting here yeah. and before exercise. Then in that way, I've sprayed it on. That's what's good. Anywho, uh, you're probably wondering, what are you saying, Garabo? Well, if you watch me every day, you would know. Anywho, so let's just put some captions out there. Watch out for that. Watch out for captions. Uh, they are not always accurate. They're sometimes misspelled. They're sometimes the wrong word altogether. I don't have time to edit them. As you can see with the shorts that I made recently, they're editable. I could edit the ones in the short precisely because it was a short. But this here is too long and I'm not about to go out like that. I'm not about to go and not so much waste my time because it's not a waste of time. It's worth the while. But I don't have the energy, okay? So somebody else will do them. Uh, also, look out for what do you call this i may or may not be wearing application makeup if i am you will know okay so yeah i sometimes ish, I, i'm not in the mood like i'm just not in the mood i'm recovering do you understand like i sometimes blush my cheeks to show that i am human but i'm not in the mood i'm just not in the mood um yeah just as i'm not in the mood even to spritz my hair even though it's a healthy hair practice oh um there's a lot of darkness in this world with my fan it's really hot now i'm not gonna be long i told you guys that these days i'm not i'm gonna be doing like 10 minutes 10 minutes like that's it <clears throat> i might bring shorts back i don't know but i just don't have the energy to just be going on and on and on all right let me how can i say it so y'all guys know that recently hezbollah attacked israel's military not mis what am i talking about you see i'm a scatterbrain right now um hezbollah attacked israel's iron dome and the reason why they attacked it is because they're frustrated by the fact that they keep trying to bring israel low but they're just not getting it right because they've got that iron dome it's protecting its citizens they're safe largely well i had a dream about a cousin of mine that just keeps going back to the drawing board like this woman and i don't want to repeat myself because i've already repeated this over and over again i've already communicated to you what her modus operandi is and she's still on that she is still on that i'm not even going to describe the dream as not worth my while this chick used to be my best friend and she is working like a dog to make sure i don't come up for air and the uncomfortable thing about what she's doing is that she doesn't even have to work so hard because she's gonna get exposed anyway by whatever happens to me like whatever happens to me whatever myriad of outcomes could happen with my life she's gonna get exposed she already has been my life is weird and it's clear that there's something strange that she's involved in first and foremost let's put that out there secondly this could result in my death so herein lies a bunch of people that spoke smack about me and then the person they spoke rubbish about after trying to stand up again after 10 years of suffering then ends up dead there is the exposure like nothing is going to end well for this woman uh if at all i get my breakthrough again she won't be able to stand precisely because i got my bro breakthrough and she got humiliated and then there's the scenario the uh make-believe situation that can never come to pass where it is that i end up basically worshiping at her feet listen to this like understand the level of a freaking how do i like how can i do like it's just so arrogant i don't know what it is about people who get into witchcraft that just makes them so mad it makes them so crazy yo like it gives them delusions of grandeur in the worst way like imagine being an arch enemy of somebody and then you apologize to them just for the sake of of some kind of a semblance of a normal life everybody got some kind of like pride all right everybody has got something like everybody you know there's 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 a saying in this world that everyone has a price yeah well everybody has a threshold for what it is that they're willing to take 
while people trample them underfoot before they just blow a top. An arrogant activity in the presence of people that have been trying very hard to avoid you for a long time because you are a write-off. When you are arrogant in the presence of somebody that's done with you and you expect something, the day is going to come when they reach a threshold, like a top that they're going to blow and it's going to humiliate you. This cousin reached her something like five, six, seven, ten years ago and yet she's still pushing. Like imagine somebody riding you over with a bicycle a motorbike a car a train essentially and then you end up in hospital disembodied to a certain extent missing some limbs you end up defaced you've lost your face you've lost everything and you are out here recovering and then you come into contact with knowledge that this the, the reason why you're in hospital why you even got hit by that tricycle that bicycle that motorbike that car that train was because somebody sent it to you and then you find out who did that to you here it is that you're in hospital missing a leg you're missing an arm your face is completely scarred yeah and then you get told who did it to you and you are out there like literally living livid seething do you understand and you are boiling at this point you are angry you are beside yourself with irritation over what and all just happened irritation is actually quite a light word mm, yeah and then this individual comes to the hospital tries to visit you and then you tell the nurses and the doctors tell that bugger not to get anywhere near me otherwise i'm gonna get my hands on their throat and i will end their life like you literally become mortal enemies with somebody you end up wanting them dead you end up wanting nothing to do with them and then this person upon hearing from the nurses and doctors that this person doesn't want to see you because apparently you're the one that caused her to be in that position then that person not only denies it not only denies that they sent this when you've got all this exculpatory evidence in your at your disposal frankly yeah not only do they deny that they sent a truck on you they sent a whole uh, barrage of of trays full of alcohol on your face to just deface you whatever might be the thing that caused the accident not only do they deny that but they then also freaking insist on an apology then they insist on an apology for accusing them that's the bravado that's the brazen insanity of people around my life that's the brazen insanity of that animal of a cousin she used to be my very best friend yeah from what i see in my dreams apparently allegedly she hopes the day is going to arrive when i apologize for accusing her of witchcraft just like the rest of these vagrants all over the show she's trying to come back into my life they all eventually do because they lose very important people however she imagines that she's in an ev elevated position to boss me around and if at all i'm gonna take if, if at all i'm going to essentially have her back and have her aid my freaking cause like i hate this chick like y'all need to understand i can't stand her in order for her to aid my cause to help me along like a nice little hobo that you're giving a hundred rand on the side of the street i gotta apologize first and foremost i don't want your freaking help your scraps you're the devil let's just put that out there and secondly the brazen audacity to think that just because your witchcraft is anonymous allegedly and invisible that i did not see it to imagine that i would spend 10 years having been disembodied having been scarred all throughout my body thoroughly literally I'm unimaginative of even getting out of this in one piece. Yesterday I spoke about how it is that I imagine that the situation that I'm in, I cannot possibly have a future because of the fact that I'm good. I've got so much freaking trauma from what was done to me that there's no way that I'm going to bounce back. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to bounce back. So I am permanently damaged. And the person who did that to me, the people who did that to me, because I don't have evidence of their sangomas coming to me and being like, I did that for her. Yes, I did do it. I must now apologize to them so they can help me. It's yet again a more Hegelian dialectic. People decimating your life that they might be the only ones there here to rescue you. I want nothing to do with that woman. She is the scum of the earth. I find her filthy. It's that basic. And over and above, finding her filthy, I find it audacious that, th that she thinks she can use witchcraft in order to cause me to accept her help in exchange for an apology. In exchange for an apology. But do you know what under heaven it is that the Lord describes this woman as? Hence, I started speaking about Hezbollah when I sp uh, commenced this conversation. The Lord describes this chick as Hezbollah. She's been trying to bring down the Iron Dome. In other words, she's been trying to get me to defect from Christianity. She has been trying to get me. She belongs to some hard knock secret society. She is devilish in the worst way. She is a hard knock devil worshiper, blood drinking type extreme. Hers is a status that is 
advanced in comparison to a lot of other people involved in the occult that have wreaked havoc in my life. She is a member of a secret society, very diabolical, blood drinking type organization. As in human blood, like vampires type. Of, in other words, they're into human sacrifice. That's what this chick is into. She's into something heavy and her secret society has dedicated entire seances at her petition, like her raising it, what do you, like at her request, thank you to try and derail me from Christianity. She belongs to the kind of organization that uh, unravels churches. Like they go into churches and they plant seeds. They infiltrate lives of Christians precisely to bring them low because they can see that there is power in the name of Jesus. And so they are trying to literally eradicate strong Christians from within certain areas of influence because they see that when we're there, things don't go according to plan with their organizations. They're literally the kinds of organized secret societies that try to run countries. She belongs to something like that. And they can't stand Christians in such environments as these because we are blockers of spiritual manipulation effecting in any given system. If we are standing in our position, we stop spells from being fulfilled. So they can't stand Christians. Uh, so this chick essentially kept, has kept on dedicating me to her occult organization to do to me what they have allegedly done to many Christians, allegedly done to many churches, cause them to be flustered, fluffy, watered down, what they've done to Christians and companies in order to move them out the way, in order to get certain things done in organizations. Yeah, they do spells like those and they've been allegedly apparently succeeding. I mean, she must be succeeding. They must have been succeeding if at all she thinks I'm a feasible hope. And she therefore keeps on dedicating me to her little cult asking them help me bring this chick low she's she's one of those she's one of those let's do something to derail her from christianity so she's been helped sometimes she's done it individually on her own she's been trying for a minute to get me to abandon christianity because they understand that there is something about those who worship jesus that makes their lives a living nightmare above everybody else that they keep on targeting in these organizations of theirs and so for those reasons they always try to nuke the christian the first proto like mode of operation tends to be water them down water them down water the christian down water them down cause them to sin against god that they might be curseable essentially this chick is walking in what would be the tantamount of balaam's era Balaam's Balaam's era Balaam's era in the Bible is this um uh, what do you call this is this guy right Balaam's era is this a uh, Balaam in the scriptures basically tried to curse God's people but couldn't because you can't curse those whom God has blessed and you can't bless those whom God has cursed and Balaam's era was essentially causing or advising Balak to or was it Balak who advised Balaam I stand corrected but advising him to cause the people of God to commit sexual immorality and eat food sacrificed to idols so that they would be in a compromised state that they might be curseable so the best way to I guess derail a Christian is to get them to walk away from Jesus to backslide to fall into sin then you can curse them so this chick has been trying to mow me to the ground her thing is to bring down the iron dome she is worse than most in what she's trying to do to me because it's not like if i were to settle and compromise she would leave me alone she wants to get to me uh, let me use the iron dome example so you can understand what this this chick is god called her hezbollah god described her as hezbollah I imagine if hezbollah uh, okay fine let's say hezbollah prospered to knock out the iron dome all of those god points the iron dome shoot them all down until this missile defense system over israel is gone and so the israelis are now laid bare and uh just basic air and there's nothing at all protecting them do you think hezbollah is going to celebrate and just move on because they prospered to cause israel to not be able to defend itself no the primary reason why you would want to bring down the iron dome is in order to shoot dead throw missiles up tops landing on people's houses landing on people's stores businesses landing in synagogues and churches and landing you get my point like just bomb israel like mow them to the ground make sure that every last man woman and child is in a casket so we can all take it so it's like all or nothing it's an all or nothing strategy no like uh, joe biden is argia and uh, many of the uh nations of the european union they're trying everything in their power if anything to a point of even coercion to create the two-state solution where israel is going to have to give away some of the land sovereign land that belongs to it in order for the for for, for palestine for the palestinians to be at peace except no one the palestinians nor the israelis want a two-state solution thank god benjamin netanyahu was like no way like there's no way that we're doing a two-state solution nobody wants a two-state solution except for the european union and the united states of america 
America and maybe even the United Nations. No one wants a two-state solution in the actual like states that are being mediated on behalf of by the global community. Israel doesn't want a two-state solution and neither does, does Palestine. For them, it's all or nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Palestine, the Palestinians, they're trying to take all of Israel because they think it's their land. And Israel is like, hey, we have a right to exist. So there is no middle ground. So even men like Yair Lapid, I don't know what he's doing. He's not going to get anywhere. I don't want that guy back in power. Like, I just don't. But it doesn't matter what I want. At the end of the day, it's about what in the world and the heaven it is that God is going to do. He, he does not want his land to be divided. And those who want to divide his land, they're going to be judged. So if both states that are being communicated, that are being mediated on behalf of by the global citizenship want nothing to do with a two-state solution, therefore mediation is not um, possible, whether or not people try. Mediation is not possible. And my cousin and I are like Palestine and Gaza. I like Palestine, sorry. I like Ga not Gaza. Palestinians and the Israelis. We are at loggerhead. We are at odds. We are in never going to be ever what we used to be. Like we are done. Do you understand? There is mortal enmity between us as an unto death, as funani, lethally, fatally. Both of us are in that space. We are mortal enemies. And she knows it. She is aware of it in the worst way. And the only reason why she now wants me dead is because of how humiliating I am. She's been trying to kill me for a minute. But there came a time where she was like, if she apologizes to me, I let it go. So I, I'll pretend Wuti, nothing of this ever happened. And I, I will just act as if though, like she just went crazy for a minute and then I'll leave her alone. But the fact that I am not yielding has made out of us mortal enemies. We've been mortal enemies this whole time. She started out trying to kill me, calmed down at some point, and now she's back at it again. And the reason she wants to knock me out of the way is because I am basically a threat to what she imagines to be the a uh, sovereign state that she has created out of herself from stealing everything from me. She imagines that if I rise, she will inevitably fall blunk on the ground with no avenue of getting out of that. And with her feeling that way, to her, she does not look at this like it's a, like she doesn't even imagine repair. She is not even interested in Christ. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. It's like she is telling her, even if she, this is what she's thinking. If I give my life to this apparent Jesus of hers, I'm going to have to admit that to her, it is too much of a price to pay for the loss of reputation to accept in her stride, even having a relationship with God. She does not care for salvation because she doesn't think there is hell to be paid. She does not care. She, for her, it's about this earth. It, this is what, it starts here, it ends here. Nothing but this planet is what we are all doing tomorrow. There is nothing but this dying, this planet. And so because she has absolutely no faith and she is that reprobate, she has been trying to neutralize me because she does not believe there is hell to pay. If she believed there was hell to pay, she might be prepared to put her tail between her legs and rather apologize to me. She might be prepared to put her tail between her legs and admit that she did it and face the consequences on earth of what she did, but however, inherit eternal life. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? This chick does not care for the gospel. Again, Anda, but she's like Anthony LeVay. Chick gonna be Aja passing away, a whole hard knock devil worshiper, and on her deathbed, she's going to be saying, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Just as she's slipping into hell because she can tell that she made the wrong choice. That's who this chick is. She's freaking Anthony LeVay. She's a devil worshiper to the nth degree and she does not even believe that there is anything to my God. She's been handled over that badly and looking at my life is one of those that makes her uncomfortable and her occult organization has added insult to that particular injury because she's been making an observation all this time ever since she has belonged to that secret society. She's been making an observation that Christians are by far the most monolithic force that is hard knock and immovable that they've been dealing with for years in comparison to any other body of people. And they've been trying to knock us out. They've been making war with the body of Christ for a minute. And I'm now one of the members of this funny little religion. And so for those reasons, she cannot get to me. They, they know that they can't get to Christians and she wants to get to me. This chick is Hezbollah. This chick is Palestine. She's freaking Iran. She is Syria. She is trying to take my land. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. These Muslims feel entitled to all of Israel. They're not trying to get just the West Bank, you know, certain parts of Judea, ancient, ancient Judea and Samaria. No, they don't care for a two-state solution. They want all of Israel at the expense of all of the Jews. Where are they going to go? 
not having an independent land we know what happened in the days of the holocaust all throughout these years all throughout these um ages there's been all this anti-semitism right now in south africa there's like a rising anti-semitism thanks to south african sentiment about what's going on in gaza there's a global anti-semitic sentiment that is rising up as a result a whole bunch of jews across the world are in uh, an effort under aliyah to move back to israel because it is the only jewish state in the world and so because of it being safer for them to be there with less anti-semitism at least within their borders they are flying over there even if there's a war they're going back home even if there's a war so when you take away israel you literally leave them butt naked just sprawled in the streets of south africa while Cyril ramaphosa is out here accusing them at the icjj or whatever that is what under heaven it is that israel stands to be um afflicted by but thank god they're going to become a cup of trembling zechariah 12 where it is that all the nations who would try to heave it away will be surely cut to pieces because now jerusalem has been made a very heavy stone for all peoples peoples so in keeping with the same analogy may the lord make out of me a heavy stone may everybody who tries to tries to heave me a Way, also be cut to pieces because they out here seeing as the lord has made jerusalem a heavy burdensome stone for all the peoples using things like the iron dome it appears the lord by the holy spirit has also made an iron dome around us as christians that has caused people in the occult to thoroughly imagine that all they need to do is just kill our iron dome knock it out mess up with the weapons the missiles the cells um sorry the weapons defense system and then we will be gotten to after hezbollah destroys the, the iron dome if at all it had prospered you must understand the next thing that is going to happen is to like quite the hard knock nth degree october 7th and then some and then some and then some it's the holocaust all over again like they're gonna get bombarded they're gonna get massacred killed like thrown into ovens goodness these people are so horrible they actually put a baby a living walking talking sentient feeling baby in an oven and then switched it on that's what hamas did that's what the enemies of god do that is how much hate dwells in their heart against god's people that's how much they hate israel that's how much they hate christianity they would literally go literally out of their way to put a, a baby an innocuous human being that has not even committed a single sin in an oven and switch it on and let them go through all that pain before they die they did that shooting women's genitalia shooting some people so many times that uh, first responders to the scenes could not identify at first without doing dna tests whether or not there was a man or a woman the way they just got so shot and butchered and injured that that's 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 not even war guys where you shoot a person in the head and they're dead that's just anger that's bitterness that's another level of hatred that cannot be explained and that's how my cousin feels about me just uh, despite she hates me and I, it's and it's gratuitous it's unwarranted i don't know where it's coming from because like i said we used to be best friends she wants me knocked out she wants my iron dome gone because she is frustrated by the fact that i am not quite falling apart from all the weapons she keeps throwing at me so the lord describes her as hezbollah and now hezbollah is out here desperate listen to this she is desperate to get me to apologize to her so when you negotiate with people like these you are doing exactly what the european union member states are trying to do with a two-state solution they are doing what um, uh, joe biden is attempting to do with a two-state solution what the united nations is trying to do with a two-state solution like you must understand that there is no two-state solution coming there is no two-state solution coming there is no peace treaty that's going to last they will say peace and security peace and security and then calamity is going to slap them these people cannot live at peace with god's people the reason why the antichrist fosters peace for all of five seconds in the middle east after his reign of terror commences is because of the fact that they cannot stay at ease with israel they hate israel they hate the jews they will never embrace them so that's why the antichrist little peace deal falls apart ever so immediately it falls apart because hezbollah all of the iranian backed proxies iran lebanon syria yemen all these countries all around israel and all of these enemies of god they just don't they never get to a point where they actually truly 100 percent totally calm and chill they feel with israel they feel entitled to the land altogether they want to wipe them off the face of the earth they have no interest in a peace deal so to attempt to get an apology from israel or an apology from a christian for the sake of fostering peace is to set that christian up for failure in the future because ain't nobody actually going chill but just like israel christians are smart are we not yeah we're smart we don't take stupid little deals we don't make truces and we don't care what the Euro european union member states gotta say we also don't care what joe biden gotta say even though we say you're our friend we appreciate your help in this season but we are not backing down because they understand that these people don't mean peace 
they don't mean peace even during like cease fires they still out you're busy bombing Habana might say they have no self-control is that basic they want and they want it now they're like beasts in the wilderness they are untamed and there is absolutely nothing you can do to cause that beast from eating the meat it wants to eat it has got to be seized stopped dead in its tracks in attempting to coup israel by god himself like it's that bad the lord himself is the one that has to deliver jerusalem that is a cup of trembling from the hands of her enemies god in the battle of gog and magog is the one that delivers them not even the israelis their weapons defense system and all of their mighty military and support of other nations doesn't help that's how badly these people want them gone when a person is so stubborn that god gotta personally intervene you know you're dealing with a different monster altogether and the lord told me that my cousin is hezbollah like he thoroughly described her as Hezbollah. He didn't even call her Hamas because Hamas is tiny in comparison to Hezbollah. It's got more militia. It's slightly stronger. It would wreak a, a grander amount of havoc um, in Israel's life. If at all it went in full force in there, it would definitely cause a lot more um, striving in Israel. If they unleashed all of their like missiles that are facing Israel. Like, apparently there's like, something like 120,000 Hezbollah missiles that are facing Israel 24 hours a day. Yeah, they would just unleash all that stuff into Israel. Given the right nudge and push in the right direction. So I mean really and truly. Who in the world is actually trying to make a peace deal with people like those? This chick is Hezbollah. She wants it all. She wants everything of mine. She's a thief. She stole my career. She wants my womb gone. She wants my youth gone. She wants my intelligence gone. She wants my viability gone. She wants my ministry gone. Over everything. She wants my land. She is not trying to do a two-state solution with Israel. She is trying to take it over. And she's more prolific than Hamas because she belongs to a secret society. She's not an amateur witch operating by herself, consulting Sangomas. She belongs to a member of diabolical men and women who keep on messing with South Africa. So she's Hezbollah and she is trying now to come for the Iron Dome. She's trying to come for my Holy Spirit. And so there's no negotiating with that. However, this little militia, this little proxy of Iran, whatever, that she is, I got a dream where the Lord showed me that oh, I like it, apologize to you and then she will help me along. Yes, yeah, like it. It's, it's exactly like the deal that is currently uh, that Hamas so Israel uh, asked to uh, offer a, a deal that Hamas rejected. Where it is that they promised to basically stay, uh, do a ceasefire that will last for two months in order for them to release all the hostages of Israel. It makes sense. It does. Hamas gotta be neutralized. Hamas was like over our dead body, but this is what it is that we will do, what we will, um, what we demand from you in order for a ceasefire to happen. Hamas went on, listen to these stipulations, so you can understand how arrogant these people are. They are so arrogant. They're so arrogant because they they thoroughly believe that they're in a position to make such a deal as this. Hamas said, "We'll release all of the remaining hostages back to you if you permanently cease fire." And you allow Hamas to continue to run in Gaza as the leading authority. In other words, to basically still be a, pol a political force in Gaza. After Israel went in on the ground invasion and discovered that Hamas has built quite a sophisticated terror network of tunnels under all of Gaza. Over these years, planning and plotting and scheming precisely to do exactly what they did on October 7th. And some of these terror tunnels are underneath schools. They're underneath hospitals. They are in people's houses, like residential properties where men and women, Palestinian men and women, have just got to accept Duguti every so often some member of Hamas comes in their house in order to go into a, a tunnel. Yeah. So they have made civilians human shields that way by making sure that they build their terror infrastructure right underneath civilians. That's Hamas. Right behind an MRI machine are a whole bunch of weapons that belong to Hamas in a hospital. I mean, once you discover that level of tactical, ambitious future strategy against your country in another land. Why in the world would you let the same people who built those sophisticated tunnels underneath the entire strip, why would you let them run the show again? Because then you will never be safe ever again. You will never sleep again. The kibbutz will never be rebuilt. Like you need to understand there is no peace at all. At all. If at all Israel lets it go, coupled with the fact that after that terror attack happened by Hamas on the 7th of October to it was in Israel, a whole bunch of um, like uh, what is this muslims a whole bunch of jihadists across the world on iranian television etc made it clear that 
October 7th was October the 10th. It was October the 12th. It was November. It was December. It was 2025, 2027. In other words, it's going to keep happening. Like they basically said, this is not the end. It's only the beginning. I mean, when you get given threats of that nature, why in the world would you want to cease fire? No, this thing got to be eradicated the way that ISIS was eradicated. Otherwise, nobody is safe. Is that basic? Nobody is safe. But Hamas went on right ahead and said to Israel, cease fire permanently. In other words, stop fighting us and let us continue to run the show. So basically, we need to go and fix our tunnels that you raided, that you emptied, that you vandalized. We got to patch them back up again and then build more so that one day we can come this time around with even bigger weaponry and a better plan. I mean, it's like literally that dumb. You don't negotiate with people who are in the, like they're crazy to even ex oh by the way i'm not even done not only did hamas demand that they stop the war then they will release all the hostages mm -hmm. but they also said and also you gotta give us a prisoner transfer give us back some of our people that are in your prisons so all these terrorists are gonna be exchanged for hostages and there's gonna be a complete ceasefire and then israel is gonna stop its ground invasion retreat essentially embracing defeat all in the name of mediation i spoke the other day in my vi video and i said that mediation by human beings is always compromising the person who is completely right but mediation by god is does not take prisoners it is straight it is narrow it is just and it is unshifting and that is the only mediation we ought to seek as the human race if at all you are completely right and people are wrong if you seek a human mediator like the european union member states if you seek a human mediator like some friend of yours some boyfriend some mom some dad they are going to make you hook up concessions uh, that you are going to be patronized by in the future if you're completely right god is the only one that can give you the justice you need and that's why israel is going to be delivered by no one but god they're going to be delivered by no one but god in the end it's always god gog and magog battle ends with god fixing it the uh tribulation where that's called jacob's trouble with all of that persecution of jews that massacring of them in their land it gets ended by jesus nobody ever stops hating the jews nobody ever stops hating the christians nobody ever stops and there is never ever any like feasibility of reaching concessions by the jews or by the christians that is like livable there is no middle ground that's livable by any groups that are in god's eyes favored because people are dumb and crazy when it comes to christians and jews they can't think straight but dumb but dumb and they literally expect us to just take rubbish lying down because we are a suffering bunch they don't even realize that the lord did prophesy first and foremost jacob's trouble and secondly the body of christ he did say if anybody wants to live a life in godliness they will suffer persecution so our persecution is what makes them think like hamas you're dumb that they can actually do uh, hook up some kind of a negotiation of that nature where they ask you to bring they will give you all of your hostages that's the only thing that israel is actually getting in exchange for a complete ceasefire for us to continue to basically be a terror organization that is thriving and growing and building new tunnels with different um, enforcements, reinforcements that, that are going to be even stronger than before and even more elusive towards you than ever before, coupled with the fact that you're going to give us a whole bunch of terrorists that are in your prisons that are uh, arrested for good reason because they killed Israelis or they committed crimes in Israel and now you're going to give them back to us. But what you get are your hostages. Take your 100 and something hostages that remain. Take them. We'll stop raping your women, but you need to just give us everything we've ever wanted everything we were like that's the level of bottom that people who try to cause us to falter say to us and the only reason they have any level of bravado to seek out such concessions from us is because they are making an observation of our persecuted state they're making an observation of the lack of support that we have hamas is making an observation of global support of palestine they're making an observation of global insanity concerning israel not israel what is this um uh, uh, jihad like very extreme muslim muslim sentiment is being strangely embraced even by children on tiktok for crying out loud they're making an observation of the uh, support that they have overwhelmingly across the world despite being terrorists rapists murderers of babies throwing them in ovens and then turning them on despite being that they're getting support anyway because people are blinded by the god of this world who has made them love everything except for that which god loves they are blinded by that and so that can cause a person to be so arrogant so as to say give us all the prisoners you have in your town in your um prison that you arrested that are actually criminals give us peace to basically you know rebuild terror tunnels and rebuild a terror infrastructure against you and give us peace to run these, sh these streets and then never ever come back at us again then we'll give you your hostages then we'll give it like yeah and that's what my cousins are trying to negotiate for hezbollah just walking around in these streets yeah
thoroughly throwing a missile into my particular uh, uh, neighborhood every like 10 seconds but it all keeps getting intercepted except for one or two that land um in, in my backyard that's what's good the iron dome that i've got around me and that holy spirit shielding that holy spirit covering that i've got they now she is now making a recognition an observation that absent of it coming down she's never ever going to get what she wants out of me this chick is not trying to reach a truce middle ground peace she is not trying to embrace any mediation but she is acting as if though she is I can see why she wants me so fully finished off. I literally cannot explain what I can say me, this woman. I do not know what I did to this chick to make her hate me like this. But bottom line is, the hatred has been reciprocated now. I am phony. And understand, to hate her like this is not ungodly, it is not unbiblical. David spoke about all of his afflictors as, I hate them with a perfect hatred, I count them my enemies. Why? Because they would not stop trying to kill him. And that's what this cousin of mine is doing. I counter my enemy and I hate her with a perfect hatred because she is Hezbollah. She will never, ever reach a truce. She will never reach a middle ground with me. She will never, ever anticipate or imagine that I, that, that the day can feasibly arrive when we, we've at least agreed to disagree. She doesn't even want to agree to disagree with me. She just wants me taken over altogether. I don't know. I do not know. It is gratuitous. It is unwarranted. She is via, you know, it, it's, that's the thing. When people consume demons, their whole personalities change. They become new people. But you see, the thing about my cousin is she's always had it in for me, like literally from long ago. These traits of hers were evident even before she turned to, de to devil worship. This is part and parcel of her core baseline personality. It is not demon possession that she is dealing with. It's just an exacerbation of what was already dwelling in her. Where I am concerned. And now she's trying to finish me off. It's like my poverty is not enough for her. It's like the fact that my family has been messed up is not, is not enough for her. It's like my unmarried state, my childless state is not enough for her. Like, it's all or nothing. I gotta be in the ground. She gotta take it all. I have to lose everything. No ounce of glory. That's what she's trying to do to me. That's what she's trying to do to me. But like I said, there is nothing at all that's ever going to make her look good where I am concerned. I already look really bad. And she also already looks really bad. Except I look bad in an innocent, like I'm pitied. Whereas she is being looked at with people wagging their heads aware of what she did. And she thinks that by killing me, that's going to fix it. She thinks that by causing me to compromise, goodness gracious. Imagine Israel embracing that like little truce condition by Hamas. They're going to look wimpy, namby-pamby. They're going to look defeated and they will be indeed defeated and it's only a matter of time before what happened in the kibbutz is actually happening in tel aviv in jerusalem you get my point you get my point it's only a matter of time these people harbor a lot of hatred and they like the women there could not care less to shun and resent rape and viciously so against other women they could not even wear their womanhood to support israeli women they could not even have qualms or beef with their husbands with their boyfriends whatever that went and raped israeli women they, they feel it justified across the world in Western nations with their placards on university campuses are just standing for rapists. That's how crazy they are in their funny little electric far um, gone mindset that is so full of hatred and resentment against a people. Goodness gracious that like, guys, you know what? When it's not for me, the rape, any woman that can stand with any rapist in wh whatever, I, like there's nothing that can ever make me ever stand with a raped victim. Sorry, with a, a, a rapist against a raped woman no matter what their ideology or rhetoric is because at the end of the day I'm, I'm a woman i am a woman and yet these women these palestinian women abaguazi they just cannot see anything wrong with that to them it's like you know in every war there are casualties yeah indeed girl there are in every war there are casualties but to use rape as a weapon of war what are you doing you're not a woman you're not a woman you are not a woman on that day and that's just what is going on with me. All these women that are out here attacking the living death out of me are content with women, with men, harassing me, sexually abusing me, accosting me, and insisting God na, get God It's like anything goes garabo. You don't deserve to be protected from the gender-based violence that is taking away South African women. You don't deserve to be stood on behalf of. You don't deserve to have a, a hashtag on X or on Twitter because of the fact that you've been massacred by men. No, only because you're Christian. Bayasanya. Labantu, when they wanted all bayasanya. The women do not care to protect women who are being raped because for them it's like any by any means necessary. As when uh, the moment a person says by any means necessary, ain't nobody safe. You are not safe in the company of somebody that is trying to get what they want by any means necessary because that means they will kill, they will rape, they will do whatever it takes to get where they need to get. And from what I understand, the Lord has shown me 
that she will pass away from a car accident and frankly i am waiting with bated breath i cannot wait for her to cease to exist her destruction and her death is for me a, a victory that's what needs to be understood in the same way that when all of those commanders of what do they call that um the iranian revolutionary guards cause all these people that keep on harassing israel with missiles i mean it's very hard when you see photos of people as r.i.p to see them young and handsome or a man that looked like he could have been somebody's grandfather or dad yeah it's it's rough to see that people have died but then when you think about what they did to basically have that missile landing on their hotel to end their lives you understand why they had to go because some people if you don't neutralize them out of the way ain't nobody out you're gonna survive my cousin and i are mortal enemies and she has to be moved out of the way Ali, she has to die is that basic and just as difficult as it is to see all that suffering in gaza just as difficult as it is to see all of those young faces of palestinian men that died in combat against israel bottom line is they were trying to kill israelis and so whether or not this chick is a cousin is irrelevant because she is an enemy of mine and when she goes in the ground it's relief for me and my camp her whole organization go fell like a bomb it's relief for christians if you won't repent understand when there is some kind of a nuke landing in your shores you had it coming death is painful lifu indeed but some people gotta go because absent of them going there's just that much more collateral damage for so many other people some people just gotta be neutralized it doesn't matter what age they are if they are terrorists it does not matter whose mothers they are whose aunties they are whose colleagues they are if they are literally mowing to the ground all of freaking south africa they gotta go Swangandaba, that her dad is gonna cry and her mother's gonna cry and her sister's gonna cry and the whole of like the family likely will mourn i will be relieved and many other south african christians and maybe even international ones there will be a bra strap loosed and breasts made to hang of some people because of the death of that woman she is a terrorist in the worst way and the sad thing is her terror attacks are spiritual and so people don't even know she has destroyed more lives than people are aware she has put people in the ground and i'm calling her out that's why she wants me dead we're now mortal enemies there is no reconciliation possible here because like i said god compared her to hezbollah she is not somebody with whom i can make concessions she doesn't want jesus she wants me she wants to eat my head she wants to burp my toes cannibalistically she wants to eat my heart and said i have finished it so she gotta go and until such time that she does go i'm going to be endured through all of this attack that's going to keep on coming at me coming at my family it's going to keep on barking at my family she's going to keep on like this chick has or she's bewitched my little sister to try and compete me and her together she's bewitched my older sister she has made my mom daft to not even think straight where i'm concerned this chick is throwing entire rpgs on top of my family every second or third week and I gotta like now be all uncomfortable about the fact that she's gonna pass away. Let her dad cry. Because he is the one that refused to intervene when he couldn't see. He made an observation that when I get sat down, the fact that I dreamt about her thoroughly trying to pull an apology out of me. An apology. When she has laid me destitute in the dream that I had, not only was she trying to get me to apologize to her, but she was literally sending out, listen to this, guys, you know what? I'm sorry. She was sending out humanitarian aid, as in like, freebies buying groceries for my freaking family she was buying my family groceries we couldn't feed ourselves she was buying my mom things because she made sure that my mother's daughters can't do anything for her she made sure that my little sister cannot do anything for her mom like she is literally working like a dog to m lay my mother's womb waste she never gave birth to children and then rock up getting plastic it's like a pick and pay on some about you guys groceries and she wants to say in order for me to keep on giving you these groceries your little stupid child gotta apologize to me yeah it's like this chick is so naive you know it's unfortunate that my family don't listen to my prophecies they don't believe me when i speak they do but they don't care because in and of themselves they persecute me if my mom knew what in the world if she understood thoroughly if she saw the witchcraft if she was able to make an observation by herself that was believable if she gained conviction of the veracity of what i'm saying i got so irritated at my yes i got toy herself my older sister would hate her she would look at her on some the freaking audacity for you to think that you're in any position to give all of us hand-me-downs when we were the ones that were busy sliding them to you on the come up 
because you were that irresponsible. The audacity. It's brazen, but I'm the only one who born now. And when I'm screaming on the rooftops like this, Gilla, I even get yelled at sometimes by my sister. Because I had to be born. That is exposing rubbish on the rooftops that ought to be exposed and she's not comfortable with that exposure. That is exposed in broad daylight, but like the travesty that my cousin is, the, 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 just the, sh the, the charlatan that she is, the incredible, like I said, an RPG. She's a whole freaking ballistic missile coming to my family. The thing that she is, is worth the while for everyone in my family to stand together against her and her entire family. Like, how about I born? And I gotta be the Iron Dome, essentially, that is protecting even them. Despite the fact that they lack appreciation for my standing in the gap for the entire family. The people that pulled the rug from underneath the feet of my entire family are literally trying to give us hand-me-downs. Imagine, when it's winter. When the day arrives when I'm out here eating bread, brought me by that witch over my dead body, Wangudra. And indeed, you and I are mortal enemies, cousin. I know you listen to my content. That's why you keep on coming back. You keep on coming back because you're wondering whether or not this thing, it'll fail as well. Whether or not I'm actually going to down tools. You think your witchcraft will one day work. Understand. Um, somebody here is going to die on Kudra. And it's going to be you. And I'm not going to be at your funeral. I guess bye. I don't bury the dead. The, the, the Lord said to that guy that was trying to bury his dead. Let the dead bury the dead. They're dead. As for you, follow me. I follow Christ. I give my food. I don't attend funerals. But wait with bated breath for one to happen. Understand that's what I'm doing with you. I told you, you're going to pass away like two tilis in a car accident. There is nothing you can do about Rangkudra. Your only way out is to through repentance. You don't want Christ because you don't even think he's there to be grabbed. You just think I'm a psychic. Yeah, that's what I am. A psychic, a medium. Somebody that just, you know, every so often uh, can prognosticate. I can tap into the spirit realm and so I know stuff. And you don't think I'm any different from any Sangoma. You think I'm no different from any soothsayer, some from any clairvoyant. You don't think I'm any different from anybody reading into a glass ball, anybody able to give you a mood ring at your in these streets. You think I'm just any other occult practitioner veiled in Christianity and so all of my spiritual knowledge about what you're doing, you imagine it's only a matter of time before I go me and your twasa. So because you've seen people prognosticate in the past before, you imagine I'm just a prognosticator. You think I'm a psychic. You think I'm a soothsayer, a clairvoyant, perhaps a medium. You think I'm like uh, one of these people that, uh, you know, when the dead die, you go on right ahead and you consult with them. And uh, necromancy, I just talking to the dead. You thoroughly imagine that I, in the spiritual gifting of mine, that can see all the dead deeds that you do in the occult, am no different from me, Sangoma. It's just a matter of time before I out your read into bones and give you your fortune. You think that's what I am. And so how untab? You're not scared of me, but you're gonna be scared of me. You're gonna tremble and you're gonna shake because you're gonna realize I'm seated in heavenly places with God himself. Jesus, your creator, the one that you've rejected and tried to kill his daughter. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I belong to him. And so I'm above even the psychics you keep on consulting, the clairvoyants, the sangomas, all of these soothsayers, these mediums, these necromancers, all of these like false randos, these colleagues of yours on the occult that can tell the future in a glass ball. Yeah. I slay all of them. And you're gonna find that also talk a face one kutra because you won't believe on the side. You literally think I'm no different from a soothsayer. So all the best with your belief of me being a psychic and see that this was not psychic readings. This here is prophecy. This is a spiritual gift of seeing. This is what God does in his servants when you are a menace. He said in his word that that which has written is hidden in the in in Deep dark corners will be spoken on the rooftops. How in the world else as Christians are we supposed to speak all the dark deeds you do in the occult without a spiritual gift to see? That's what that Bible passage means. It means that you're going to go and bewitch and God is going to show us your entire session, your entire ritual. broad daylight, but naked nude in the light of day. When you're doing it in the dark of night, are we going to see all of your wickedness? So we saw it, girl. And no, Hardi Sangoma, we're prophets. And that's the difference. But you won't see that difference because the God of this world has blinded you. And so for those reasons, you think you've got something up on us until, until you pass away. And when you do die, heaven will rejoice because you were, like I said, a menace. I try to reach you. It's about time somebody out your knock on a casket and see your face in it. Respond saying, I didn't listen. I don't like you. You might still have people who love you. But when you die, that's what you must understand. You presently do not honor God. You don't revere him. You don't see that his prophets, you don't see that his servants are actually quite fearsome. You think we're Nambi Pam before them because we keep on suffering, except, like I said, we're seated in heavenly places with Christ. On top of that, we trample serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. With us having all that power, why? Why? Well, the monkey gang, 
You're in trouble. Oh, seven sons of Skiva trying to cast out demons. No, you can't. Trying to force a Christian to stop doing what she's supposed to because you literally are calling me one who's casting out Satan with Satan. You have been saying such things. You and your forefathers literally accusing Jesus Christ of walking in falsehood, in Beelzebubian hood, accusing Jesus Christ of walking out here in these streets as a soothsayer, uh, a Satan. You get my point. He was accused of casting out Satan with Satan just as you are currently accusing me of essentially being like basically uh, 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 an unsung sangoma. An unsung sangoma, like a person that's yet to admit duty, that's all that I am, isango. Mm. You're not the first person to go and accuse Jesus Christ, yeah. You're not the first person to go and accuse the disciples of Jesus Christ of casting out Satan with Satan. And it is precisely your activity of trying to cast out, of trying to accuse us of being psychics when we are prophetesses and prophets and those who can see that's going to get you to find out the hard way in eternity you will finally see the difference between a psychic and a prophet because when both die one goes to where you are going otherwise known as hell and then the other one goes to heaven and the two of y'all are gonna burn nicely together the one of which was able to every so often read into a glass ball and prophesy the same things that i'm saying to you but without coming in the name of jesus christ the difference is going to be the hellfire that you're all going to be burning in so all the best to the tillies. Die in your car accident. Ain't nobody gonna miss you. And even if they do, like really, they don't know that they have no business missing you. Because frankly, you've been a, a, a menace, the bane to your own family's existence and your friends. I don't know much that should, that should be trusting you at this point. The way that I see. And so now, well, they just look at me and say, hey, God, wait a second. She's huffing and puffing and blowing the house down like the big bad wolf. Abang born and Jeffella as somebody. Oh, what dealing up to come building better. Until the tables get turned and it becomes clear that I'm not bitter. I'm mad. I'm angry. I am with righteous indignation. And it is rightfully placed because people like you are an abomination to South Africa. You have destroyed this country. You have lain it waste single-handedly with people like you. You have literally bombed an entire country. And people think that my anger is displaced. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cranky. Bye-bye.